I'm here with my time machine studying modern birds. You know, modern birds are diverse and interesting, but I started looking into prehistoric birds and it turns out that they're even stranger. So let's meet some prehistoric birds, learn about their lives, and learn why they went extinct. We're in the year 66,043,000 BCE, or close to it. It's a different place than I'm used to. It's warmer for one thing, and there's lots of flowering plants, so it must be spring. Flowering plants are actually new during this time, and there are dinosaurs, including the famous Tyrannosaurus rex. But we're not here to see Tyrannosaurus, thank you very much. We're here to look at a closer relative of birds. It's called Avisaurus. Avisaurus belongs to a group of birds called Enantiornithes. It perches in trees with a foot that looks very similar to modern birds. You can see a pair of them here, a male and female. I think they have small teeth, but neither has eaten yet, so I can't tell you what they eat. They have broad, feathered wings like many of their Enantiornithine relatives, and seem to be decent flyers, although not as good as modern birds. While Avisaurus and its kin live in the forest canopy, filling that niche, the ancestors of modern birds only fill some of the niches birds have today. Along the creek there, a shorebird, not unlike those found in the world today, searches for food. Avisaurus and all the other bird relatives died out, leaving behind only the groups that turned into the birds that we have today. After this extinction, the surviving bird groups will diversify and become the entire group of modern birds. Unlike many extinct animals, we have a good idea why Avisaurus isn't around today. Avisaurus went extinct really soon after a giant asteroid hit the Earth. Bird ancestors at this time had no teeth, suggesting they ate fruit and seeds for their primary diet. While plants and meat were harder to find after the asteroid impact, there would have been seeds available in the ground to provide nutrition for these toothless bird ancestors. Digging up and eating the seed bank may have let bird ancestors squeak by while their other relatives went extinct. Speaking of which, we need to get back in the time machine right now. We don't want to see that part of the story. There have been five great mass extinctions in history, of which the dinosaur-killing asteroid was the most recent. I'll pull up a figure for you to study. Feel free to pause time if you need to. But look at the last column. Each one of these mass extinction events killed almost all life on Earth. These five events represent the end of thousands of species like Avisaurus. These groups were big and successful, but the world changed too fast or in a way that was too harsh to overcome, and the entire species was lost forever. But that's enough about mass extinctions. We're about to arrive at our next destination. Here we are in the year 4,444,444 BCE. It's April 4th. 4, 4, 4,444,444. You would expect more celebration on a unique day like this. I guess they wouldn't know that we would invent a calendar system millions of years later that would make this day unique. Also, celebrations would be rare because there are giant carnivorous birds roaming around. Terror birds, as they are aptly named, are massive birds with huge hooked beaks for killing and tearing prey, and are fast runners with big scary claws. Their wings are small and mostly used for balance while running. They originated on South America and Antarctica a few million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs. And they were the top predators until recently when North and South America became connected. They eat small to medium-sized mammals, but I bet they wouldn't mind eating a tasty snack from the future. One of the few species of terror bird to migrate to North American plains is called Titanus and is 8 feet tall and over 300 pounds. It's not even the biggest terror bird ever. A close relative from 10 million years earlier was 10 feet tall with a 28-inch skull the largest and arguably scariest head of any bird yet discovered. Here's a hologram of a terror bird for scale. We wouldn't want to be anywhere near a real one. 
Oh no, the hologram caught some attention. Back in the time machine, back in the time machine. Let's look out the window as we travel forward in time. As thousands of years fly by, the climate changes. Terror birds were supreme on the savannas, but the climate gradually changed. It got colder. And colder. Giant glaciers capped North America. In this changing environment, the population kept dropping. And with pressure from changing food sources and changing competition, eventually the reign of terror birds ended. The last descendant of terror birds was only two to three feet tall, living in South America just a few thousand years before modern times. There was no single cause for their extinction, no single event, just a gradual fade into non-existence. This is how most species in history have gone extinct. New species arise, the world changes, and those species go away forever. The average lifespan of a species is about 10 million years. Terror birds did pretty well, lasting 60 million years, but the changing world was finally too much for them. We'll make one more stop here in the year 1000 CE, where another amazing ancient bird awaits. We are on the island of Madagascar, off the coast of Africa. The climate here ranges from desert to savanna to rainforest, and there's one large bird that ranges across all these different habitats. It's called the elephant bird. Elephant birds are almost 10 feet tall and weigh over 1,000 pounds. They lay the largest known eggs of all time, reaching about a foot long. But we don't have to worry about these birds, at least not that much because these have small heads and cone-shaped beaks, which tend to belong to birds that eat vegetation, fruit, and seeds. I bet their powerful legs and sharp claws could give a devastating kick, but we're safe unless we bother them. Elephant birds have small wings, useless for flying. There are several species of plants which make big seeds with tough shells that pass through elephant bird digestive tracts. So elephant birds are important for spreading these species of plants. They have poor vision, but an amazing sense of smell, so they mostly hunt for food at night. It's actually kind of peaceful here. What's that? A blowgun dart? Uh-oh, we must be near a new type of hunter. Humans, time to get out of here. All species with small populations are vulnerable. There are really so many problems. Like, with a small population, a single event like a drought can wipe out the whole species. Or, if a new predator moves in, it can quickly kill most of the population before they can adapt. I'll put up another table which has small population problems. Feel free to pause time if you need to. So we saw three ancient birds and learned why each of them went extinct. We saw Avisaurus, which died in a mass extinction. We saw terror birds that gradually faded out as the world changed. And we saw elephant birds, which died due to small population problems that were made worse by the arrival of humans. In fact, the biggest problem that most species face today is humans. But I'm going to send the time machine off to Backyard Expeditions so that he can tell you more about human-related extinctions. Take care! Now, we're going to save this species. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to learn about birds. Be sure to subscribe before you go elsewhere in space and time. And click over to Backyard Expeditions for more time travel adventures. Thanks for stopping by this week to learn what makes life awesome.